This video shows the whole painting process for Misha here. Misha is a big piece, 36 by 48. That's, uh, that's one of the larger sizes I do. So my brushes are going to be bigger, the timeline's going to be longer, but the overall process is very similar to what I would be doing with, uh, with a smaller piece. So yeah, let's get started here with a sketch. I always start with a sketch of my subject. What I'm trying to nail down in this case is just where the features are. This is different than in some pieces where I'm going to have to start with areas of light and dark primarily. The reason for that is mostly stylistic. Because this is a portrait of a specific dog, and not just a painting of any dog, I care more about where Misha's features are than I do about the lighting. The lighting in the reference is fairly diffuse, so Misha's true colors are what I'm using, for the most part. More on that later. Once I've got a reasonably good idea of where Misha will be situated, it's time for the background. Painting the background first is great because all these little wisps of fur are going to show up as being in front of the background because they are actually in front of the background. So it's a nice way to get that effect naturally. I like to get all the edges in early, while I can still stick my fingers in the middle of the canvas for support. Okay, so at this point I'm starting in on some big blocks of color. In life, these dark patches of fur are the same color as the lighter patches above, but because they're in shadow, I'm starting with a much darker color of paint. Now I'm just going around the painting looking for anywhere that's that color to block in. You can see Misha's really starting to look more like a dog now. Okay, let's get started on some of these pinks. I wanted to get these in early to make sure that they play nice with the browns that they're about the same level of saturation and so on. When I'm doing these blocks of color, what I'm trying to do is get the average color for that area. That means I can go back in and add shadows and details later, kind of like I'm doing in the mouth here. But I can start seeing much earlier what the whole piece looks like. And that's really important for getting the lighting and shading working together harmoniously. You can see with this big brush, I'm still painting everything in the direction of the fur. That just means the brush is going to work for me and do some of that hair stuff all on its own. I'll get some of those in while the paint is still wet, and then later I can come in and add more if it looks like it needs it. I don't want to get too bogged down in details until I've put some paint on every bit of the canvas. A really great way to stop yourself from getting bogged down in details too early is by sticking with a big brush. I mean, look how much ground I'm able to cover quickly when I've got this big brush in my hand. I mean, I know it's sped up, but relatively speaking, this is still very fast.
once the big blocks are in, it's super easy to come back and add more detail with a little brush. But if you get these big areas of dark and light wrong, no amount of detail can save you. Now one of the reasons I did this kind of weird halo there and then came back and filled in the background is just so I've got somewhere to hang on to it while I, uh, while I do those edges. And now that everything has some paint on it, just about, I've moved away from that really big brush and into a smaller one. So I'm working in tighter spaces and filling in smaller chunks of color. The more experienced I get, the more my color blocks tend to be bigger and more average. That's something I'm working on this year. I'd like to be able to do a, a big brown base coat under all of those brown areas and then work the details in. I think it'll always result in a stronger piece of artwork. For now though, we're doing little bits and getting better as we go. Ah, the eyes. These are my favorite part. Something I find super helpful when painting eyes in oil paints is to start with the iris color in a super thin wash. So I've thinned this down with mineral spirits. I don't know why, but the translucence gives it way more depth than using opaque colors the whole way through. I'm sure other artists have other ways of doing this, but for me, starting with a translucent iris is just the way to go. After that, I'm coming in with the dark, shadows at the top of the eye, not where you usually expect shadows to be, but in the eye, uh, because it's recessed under the eyelid, you always wind up with the top being darker and the bottom being light. If you get this right, you get an amazing round, translucent eyeball. If you get it wrong, it'll be a bit flat. Well, I've got black on my brush. I'm just going to deepen some of the shadows in the area too. I can check whether these areas of dark should be darkest dark or whether they're actually supposed to be more of a, a mid-dark. In this case, the nostril is kind of the opposite. Right now it's a mid-dark, but really it, it's, a deeper, it's a deeper nostril than that. Let's get some quick little bits of fur texture here, just blending the edges uh, where the colors meet, because that kind of happens with dog faces. But I want to talk about the eyes some more. When I paint eyes, they go through a couple stages that look kind of flat and weird. And that's because when I come back in with the highlights, I don't want that to mix with the underlayers necessarily. So I'll do the colors that are uh, what I think of as, as kind of the object color, the iris and the shadow, but I'm not going to paint in any highlights. And when eyes don't have their highlights in them, they, they kind of look a little dead. Much better. Now I'm going to keep just working around the canvas with a very little brush, adding details here, I'm working on some mouth wrinkles, getting some highlights and lowlights in there, just pushing the paint around until it mostly looks right, like a, like a dog lip. And when you're painting, you got to keep in mind, some of these stages, they're not going to look good the whole way through. The end phases are really satisfying most of the time, but sometimes it's like, whoops, well, that looks awful, and uh, and you just kind of roll with it. Keep brightening the bits that are too dark and darkening the bits that are too light, and uh, and it'll get there. got a few more highlights to add around the lips and teeth and you can really see how much of a difference that makes it making it 3d i love adding brightest whites to grays that look like they could have been white before i added the real white there and that's a real trick with learning to paint not painting your brightest whites when you look at a piece of the painting and your brain says that's white sharp highlights are one of the most powerful tools in your toolkit for creating interest as an artist so whenever you can be a couple shades down from, from white, 
you're leaving yourself a sneaky backup plan for adding more contrast later. And that is our painting of Misha. Big art like this is just super fun to make. I hope you get a chance to try it out and that some of these videos will be helpful as you do. Likes and subscribes, always appreciated. Happy painting, everyone.